Hello, welcome back to another Waters. It's another floor. I know I have been reading these. The access logs show someone has been in the file system of my terminal. Well, by process of elimination, it has to be you. I don't mind. In fact, I suppose I have been writing these entries for an imagined audience anyway. Questions, or maybe just enough to talk. We make a strange trio now. Me, or the person who's in a biologist who can keep their mouth shut. You, an AI built from the remains of a sentient species, and your sister? You know, who is no more plant than human. But as far as I can tell, we are the only ones on this planet who have any chance of finding out what happened here. I think I am starting to understand why Mina caught me here. It was because she trusted me not to give up. I pull at the skull. Let's not disappoint her. Slow mesons are colorless polyps covered in waxing cilia, which edge elaborate spirals into the facility they feed upon. These pale formless creatures are solitary, but not exclusively so. Some accumulate together in groups, hugging against each other's mass. There appears to be no obvious chemical exchange or communication within these groups, but perhaps the patterns they form as they each serve some social purpose. Their exteriors show frequent evidence of consumption by other species, with no obvious method of defense. Upon being threatened by pressure, the polyps recoil, but do not appear to possess the ability to flee rapidly nor fight back. Perhaps something their secretion may help us to understand the underlying, underlying patterns. Analysis of the patterns secreted by the slow masons suggests something close to rudimentary communication. There are repeated motives created by Multiple members of the species, unlikely to have emerged simply from the natural movement and feeding patterns. Due, due to their slow pace, it would take an extensive amount of time to determine and prove a correlation between the alterations in the pattern and events faced by the polyps. Whether they represent warnings of form of social engagement or markers of potential nutrient sources remain unclear. But how are these patterns perceived by the older masons? Without any obvious eyes, they cannot see them, but perhaps like braille, these secretions are made by that one. seen everything and we need to know if we can we need to find whatever we can I have seen some it's left maybe it's just enough for us to get through yes I'm very forgetful AI
this one. I understand, sir. I will go to the upper with this one. sand covers the rusted metal of the archaeology so completely that it is hard to know where the facility end and the cave begins. The walls here are covered in spiral patterns and also lexicon written with similar bells of monkeys. Here, the collapsing archaeology walls have broken through into the an existing cave complex. Did we need to go to The gates lead away from the bulk of archaeology, wrapping themselves through the solid rocks and the grass. The sun filling the small tunnels even more dark ways into the cell to take the current way to take to this cave soon. The spirals here are smaller and more interwoven than that sort of archaeology. Layer after layer form a patina of circular lines. A large molded skin is piled in the corner of the cave, fragments of it drifting away across the sand. What creature left this here? These caves look ancient and deep. Is this where the creatures now inside are going to camp? The creature is there. All that's left is second floor. Looks like a solid wall. Top of the basalt pillar, a miniature statue of Bible still stands here. What the hell was this place? The aquarium glass of the atrium is shattered, leaving only wilting shards and the orange rust stains. So. The ceiling has given way above the last second entrance, filling it with rock and sand. This whole facility destroyed, buried. Erased. Was this what Lydia was looking for in the deep of the ocean? But how did she even know it was here? I feel like I'm swimming for other people's secrets. The entire ceiling of the club has come down, filling the chamber with sand and rock. No one could have escaped. Rusted shed, these hulking metal containers must have carried engineering suits or fabricators. That wall was building something. Around the atrium, some of these seating areas remain. Well, it's sand. It's easy to imagine lab techs meeting here in the lunch.
I'm sure it was just a standard security drill, Miss Fidanza. We will be able to return you to the other shell holders shortly. The financial implications are massive. We have never even come close to achieving this level of computi computation before. A crippled metal shutter has rusted over the hole left by the broken window. A security measure reached in the end. Went the ceiling here bulges with the weight of the rock above the walls of sand curling inwards. Huge slabs of rock have fallen here, erasing the boundary between the lab and the dark cave surrounding it. The entirety of this room is lost beneath layers of sand. The bars of metal frame, like bent and broken ribs, break out of the drift. The acid yellow containers shine brightly in the soot slab. Streaks of rust along their sides show they would have sealed in time. Sound piles against the barrier sealed by the emergency override when the aquarium was breached. The ceiling of the entry hall is partially collapsed with great work of riders, bent and rusters, rusted. The rust choked hall stretches out in the dark below, bricks and rocks lie in the shadows and so here have been buried in rocks, leaving only the shattered passage between them and this cave. The cave and the room have merged here, so it is hard to tell one from the other. This cave here before the bridge. This cave system must connect to others under the slopes, allowing creatures to come and go. Deep cracks lead in the dark, and a handful of tracks such as creatures come and go here. Is this the source of the initial bridge? A dark and rough silt behind the lab's paneling leads into the bedrock of the planet. Here the wall seems to have breached through to the cave system, open up to the bridge. Geometric skeletons like those found in the blue mina clothing artificials. What are they doing down here? The side of the lab is layered with sweaty sand covered with layers of iron machinery. Uh. Artificial skeletons. They were using them, harvesting them. The equipment here. They were building something. Slicing and etching the artificial skeletons. Oh, ah. Can these geodesic spheres really be valuable enough to build a whole ecology lab? And then to build it? Protect the specimens. These skeletons alone are able to correlate millions of qubits. They are re irreplaceable. We have to power it down. If the shielding is breached, it could blow out the whole facility. It starts shut down now. C 
sealed cups still, still sit on the surface, still stylus is buried in layers of silver silk, highly coated in gold and clouds. This was a competing lab. All these machines are for hardware fabrication. Why didn't this close when the approach was breached? Were they open afterwards? The lock was overrated somehow? The security locks lie wide open. The field view of the laboratory is being. Analysis of the strange molded skin we found in archaeology caves shows it is clearly formed from the flesh of slow masons. Within the tissue, the bodies of multiple polyps have been knitted together over the span of decades. Forming one layer, larger communal layer, we may have provided protection, or perhaps it was the earthing sac for some larger animal form. Shed skin can represent evidence of renewal or transformation, perhaps the polyps are not much mature, but are a larval stage of the species with each member uniting to form a larger being. As of yet, I have found no trace of this major form of medicine, but the cave networks of the ocean for to hide many creatures that could easily evade discovery. Mm, this is a good place to end this part before we delve further into one of these facilities. So for now, thank you very much, stay alive and see you soon, bye!